Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode I'm going to show you how to replicate an iPhone UI effect. Now if you don't have an iPhone that's fine. Um, I haven't found any kind of live uh, in the wild examples of this yet so um, either it's a terrible idea or it's, um, it's just not been cracked yet. But either way, I'm going to show you how to do it using jQuery. So the effect is when you open up your address book, um, the iPhone groups it into uh, categories beginning up. It separates it using headings such as A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. <clears throat> as you scroll up and down, the, the, the letter that you're on stays at the top of the page. And when you get to the next letter, it just kind of pushes it out of the way. So there's always context of what content you're looking at. So we're going to recreate this uh, using jQuery. So here's my mock-up, um, and it's just uh, an overflowing box with a bunch of headings. So what you have to imagine is when I scroll down, header 1 is always visible at this point, and then header 2 sits over the top and, and replaces it. Um, so right down at the bottom, we'll have header 5, then the content, then header 6, and then some more content. So let's get into this code. What we're going to need to do is place, uh, basically tweak the markup and change the way it's arranged so that our effect can run properly. Now at the moment it's just a div with overflow, heading 2, p tag, heading 3 and so on. What we need to get to is having, to, to, to kind of create a fixed block effect, we need to wrap it with this div class equals box. So I've replicated the, um, the height and width and uh, this box dot box is just to get rid of the, the border. So now I've got a box around it um, and I need to put my h2 and fake header but our style will be uh, position absolute top zero and z index something quite high. So you can see the fake header there and the problem is that it it's not the right width. So we'll also have to include the width, like dynamically work out what the width of our our, um, our real headings are and use it for the width of our fake headings. So let's quickly grab that and show you what it looks like. Uh, 365. Okay, so there's our fake heading with the, the correct width. <coughs> And when we scroll down, these headings have to sit above it. And the way that will happen is for them to have a, a high Z index. So um, let me just show you that. If I give this element a Z, Z index of um, 100, I believe the other one was 99, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so 99. This is higher. Now, when I scroll down, it's supposed to sit over the top of this fake header. The problem is, it doesn't. And the way that we're going to get around that is by using um, position absolute on these headings as well. <clears throat> okay, which works, but now the width is wrong, so we need to set the width at uh, 365px. But also, you notice there's a space where um, the p tags kind of collide with each other. So what we're going to have to do is create a fake spacer after the h2, so it'll push the content down and then heading 2 will we'll sit at the top. And then using um, uh, an event to kind of track how far we scrolled, once our new header is completely over the top of our fake header, we'll take the text and put it into our fake header. So when you scroll a little bit further, that, that new text is in this fake header. So let's get cracking. Okay, so let's get rid of this, uh, this code that I've added in. So when the document is ready, so when the DOM is ready, we're going to run our code. And we have a few things that we need to do when we, when I, when we run our code. So one, grab a bunch of variables. So these will give us the heights and widths and so on, and we'll work those out as we go along. Two, um, absolute position on the H2s and fix the z-index so they increase. 
three, bind a scroll event. Text of the fake heading. Um, and for is um, just kind of do the initialization. So, right, let's grab the container to start off with. So the container is the uh, this box item. So container box. Um, what else do we need? So we need the headers. When I put a dollar in front of the, the variable, um, uh, let, me, let me not do two things at once. When I put a dollar in front of the variable, it's just a visual cue for me, um, the person writing the code or reading the code, that this has um, jQuery functions on it. Um, that's the only reason we use it. So my selector, I can do headers, and that'll give me all the headings on a page. However, I might have um, an H1 in there, so I want to put um, some context. So only I can do container dot find headers. And that will give me all the the header elements. If the if you're specifically using H2s, obviously we can just do H2, as we are in this example. I need to um, set as in Z index because when I loop around this lot, I need to increase uh, increment uh, increment one at a time. So we're going to put our Z index as one. <coughs> And then I need a, he a, a copy of the first heading to, to use for the fake one. So the one that's actually sitting underneath my fake one at the moment. Uh, this one, header one. So to do that, I'm just going to do var static, uh, or let's call it fake header. And then it's going to be headers filter down to the first one and clone. Now that I've got a copy of this. Uh, this first heading. It's not in the DOM, it's not um, on the page anywhere, it's just sitting in this variable. We'll add it in uh, to the DOM in the, the initialization. So those are the variables that I think I need for the moment. Um, next we're going to loop around the headers, so headers.each function. And as we loop around we need to um, set position absolute etc and create the fake that or the white space <clears throat> remember to push it down a little bit so var header equals this header dot css and position absolute um, top Oh, don't top actually. We want the height and width, so we need height equals uh, the current height, so header dot height, and width equals header oops, dot width. So we need to put these variables back in because it's going position absolute. and then we give it a Z index. <clears throat> and I'm using this plus plus to increment it as soon as we add it in. So um, it'll set it to, I think it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So if we just double check this, save it and run it. Um, sh oh, we've got an error to start off with. Okay, oops, hello. Dollar is not defined. Class. Right, um, I'm just going to grab the Ajax um, Google library version of that. <clears throat> this is what I tend to use for all the projects I work on. I just grab the, um, the minified version from Google. Drop it into there. And there we go, we've got uh, jQuery. So, now you can see the, the widths are correct, but we've got this, um, this spacer thing I mentioned before. So if I scroll down right to the bottom, you see the heading um, is sitting over the text. <clears throat> so we need to create a space that's the same height um, as this, this H2. So, 
bar spacer equals um, well, right, I'll show you what we're going to do. So header dot after div, and then we want to grab that. So if I let me show you this. If I cont if I drop this out into the console, I wanted to do var spacer equals that, but it it'll just give me the header back. So I actually need to navigate to it as well. So I do dot next. If I just log that out to the console, <clears throat> here I've got the divs. If I hadn't called next, I would have still had the header. So it will log out a bunch of H twos. There you see. So I've now got this spacer that's inserted into the DOM. If we just inspect as well, you can see this blank div. And we're going to give it some CSS as well. So height, height from earlier, and we're just giving it width just for good measure. So refresh this. And it's almost right, it's not quite right. So what's wrong? <clears throat> so here's our spacer in the first instance so it's definitely there and it's definitely pushing the content down ah, right so here's the problem if you can see the highlighted height you can see it's 29 pixels and our h2 has got a height of 29 pixels but it also has a padding so if you look at the layout it's actually got this extra padding so what we need is the outer height of the um, of the header outer height so you have mi uh, inner height outer height and just straight height let's try that again and it doesn't give us the right thing it's made our heading too big so it's made our heading too big here um, We, in fact, we only need it on um, the the CSS thing. So let's get rid of it on there. And this is just header dot height. So that's correct, but because it already has the padding, and here we're using the um, header outer width and outer height, and we can't use it straight away here. Uh, no. yeah, yeah. So let's refresh that. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Um, I got that the wrong way around. That should be width, not height. Okay. So that's basically faking it back to what we want. And the markup should be modified now. So we've now got this blank div. Next one down. H2. Blank div. Great. That's what we want. <clears throat> Oops. Right, so that's that done. Um, my gut feeling is that that could be done a little bit easy, uh, in an easier way. Um, but I'll discuss that. I, if I have a better idea, I'll discuss it on the, um, the jQuery Designers blog. Um, the blog post that goes with it as well. So the next task now is to say, when this scrolls, take our fake header and um, once it goes past header 1 or header 2, grab the text and put it in. So, just so we can see what we're doing, let's put our fake header in. So, um, a container. So the container we actually need to um, wrap it with this div that we showed you before. Div class equals box. <coughs> and I think we can just do container dot before. Uh, and dot fake header. Oops, fake header, fake header. Let's try that. Um, okay, and we need to style our fake header. So dot CSS. Oh, where did that go? <clears throat> so 
So we need the height from the um, one of these first headers. Uh, not the height, sorry, the width. Nope, where's that going? Let's change the text so we can see. Um, oh, I'm not even putting it in. Fake header. Let's change the text as well so we can see it. So here's our fake. Z index is one. Okay, so the Z index is one on this as well, so it's sitting over the top. So let's change the starting point to two. Z index one. Z index two. Why isn't that sitting over the top? Oh, we can see it. Why? Okay, that's fine. That's that's what we want. that is actually what we want because what happens is these headings have to go over the top of the uh, the fake text, and when the fake appears again, it's taken on the text from the one that just slipped underneath. Yep, so that's correct. So you can see the effects starting to happen. Now we have to get that that scroll event <coughs> container. Oops, container dot scroll function. What we need to do in here is loop around every single header, work out which one we're sitting on top of, and grab that text. So, it, I would argue that it doesn't really work on a, on an absolutely massive block of text, you know, absolutely huge amount of text. But um, it's going to be fine for kind of 10, 15, maybe 20 as well. Um, and you can give this a test as well, kind of open your your uh, your performance monitor or your activity monitor and, and see how much CPU it's using. So headers dot h function and we need to grab the current header, <coughs> grab its top position. So um when we're down here is the top position which is here um at the very top of the actual box. So top equals dollar header dot offset dot top. And we need to say if top is less than this top position, this corner here. So we we need to actually capture that. So if you look at your uh, your inspector, the top is eight pixels down from the top, very top of this box. So we need to capture that as well. Um, so if top is less than container top, then we need to change the fake headers text to dollar header dot text. We've lost. Oh, we've got an error. Okay. Container top is not defined. Oops, there we go. Container offset is not a function. Yes, it is. Sorry. It should be a function, offset. Oh, no, top is property, isn't it? Yes. Yes, okay. Right, let's scroll. Cool. So you see it's one, now it's two. One, two. So what we need to now do is say when 
when it gets into that position, we need to make this this fake div actually jump over the top of this one by making the Z index higher. So let's try and grab let's say fake index dot CSS Z Z index and then take the header dot CSS Z index plus one. Let's see if that works. I think that's happening too early. What's happening now? So it's it's it is sitting above. But it's sitting above too early. So Oh, hang on! No, 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 no! The Z index is just too way too high. Forty-one. That's the incorrect. That's not the right number. That's no, because it's done a. Um, when we've used this plus, it's put the two strings together. So it's used the, the string four and put it on a one. So we need to actually parse that as a, an integer. So that will now add it as a number. So we should get f instead of forty-one, we get two. Okay, so you can see the effects starting to happen. There's a little bit of a jump. So I scroll down slowly. You see it kind of just moving a little bit. So you're looking up here. As I scroll down, it goes up and down. So the reason why there's a very, very small jump is because our top position is slightly wrong. So let's, um, let me what I mean by top position, it this top is wrong. So let's drop this out into the console. And it says eight. But <clears throat> really visually for us, the top position is actually inside of this border. So we've got the border to, to, to contend with. So we have a 5p px border. So if I just manually for this moment add, f um, add five, I think five, add. Perfect. So it just stops exactly in the right place. So you can do two things here. You can either um, just manually add the number if you know if you're just using it like I am, or you can add up um, all the individual kind of top uh, margin and and um, border. So let's do that. And I think that's our our entire effect. So CSS margin top plus container CSS border top. And it's border top width, not border top, which is something I spent a long time trying to work out. Let's try that. Oh. No, okay, that didn't work. Um, I'm pretty sure now. Let's have a look at this container top to see if we've broken that. Yep, there we go. So same problem before. We were concatenating strings, so we need to change these to ints. So parse int and parse int. Let's see if that does it. Thirteen, and thirteen is eight plus five. Perfect. So that's our effect. When I scroll up and down, the header is now fixed. So that's all the code. Um, the initialization is actually this line of code. So let's get rid of the console log. Take those three lines and drop it down to the initialization. And instead of fake here, what we do is we take the first header, dollar header filter first dot text and there it is that's our fixed slider uh, fixed header effect um, if you have any questions drop a comment on jQueryForDesigners.com. Um, if I think about how to do this a little bit easier or in a shorter amount of code I'll pop it up there on blog posts as well 
Um, otherwise, thanks for watching.